In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple OKR setup inside of Notion that is designed specifically for agencies. Now OKRs or objectives and key results is a framework that was originally created for much larger teams. So when smaller teams adopt it, they often find it can be overkill. That's why I created this simplified version that still gives you the benefits of setting and tracking objectives without being burdened by the complexity of traditional OKRs. So here's a quick preview of what we'll be building. So as you can see, this setup is made of three sections. We have our objectives, and then feeding into them, we have our projects, and then feeding into those, we have our tasks. So if we dive into any of these objectives, you can see within each objective, we have the number of projects that make up that objective. And then within each, any of the tasks, we have the number of tasks that make up that particular project. So let's dive into building this setup together. So to start, we'll want to create the three databases that we need. So first of all, I'm going to create a heading by doing forward slash and choosing heading three. And the first database we're going to create is objectives. So I'll just give this the title of objectives. And then I'm going to create the actual database itself by doing forward slash searching for databases. I can choose this very first one, which is going to give me an inline database. And then I'm going to choose new empty database. So obviously I'm going to call this the objectives database. And then I just want to create all of the properties that I'll need for this database. So the first thing I'm going to create is actually a status. So what I can do is come to this option here, and then I'm going to choose out of all the options, the status option, and we just have not started in progress and done. I might just change the done to achieved. And then I also may decide to add a archive option. If there's an objective that we started that we end up not finishing, but we don't want to take forward anymore. So I'll add that here and choose archived and maybe just give that a gray option to give some distinction between the two. We are also going to create a progress bar that shows the overall progress of the objective but it doesn't necessarily mean that that will always show 100% when the objective is done. So it's nice to have this option to also change the status manually as well. So the next property I'm gonna add is a assignee. So again, I'm gonna add the property from here. I'm going to look for the person property and I'm just gonna call this the owner. And I'm actually going to create a limit for this by saying that only one person is allowed to be attached here. So for the objective, there is always going to be one overall owner, which is going to ensure that we have accountability for each of our objectives. Now, some people may add dates to their objectives, so a deadline or a due date property, um, but I typically create and plan my objectives on a quarterly basis. So instead of using that, I'm just going to add a simple tag property for the different quarters in the year. So again, to do that, I'm going to add an option here and the property that I want is the select property. And I'm going to add the different options and I'm literally just gonna do Q1 to Q4. And then of course, wanna make sure that I add the title of this property as quarter. That looks good for now. We'll add some more properties later, but for now let's move on to the projects database. So again, I'm gonna do a forward slash three to get that heading three and just add a projects title. And then I'm gonna do forward slash, look for databases, choose the inline option to actually create my projects database. Instead of hitting new empty database, I'm just gonna click out of it, which is gonna give me an empty database anyway. And let's call this projects. I'm gonna hide the actual database title and now add the properties that I need. A bit like the objectives database, I do want a status option for these projects. So again, I'm gonna add a property from here, choose status, and this is good for me for now. I also want a assignee. So again, I'm gonna add from here, choose the person property, and I'm gonna choose this as the owner or retitle this as the owner. Now for the projects, I would like an overall due date or deadline. So I'm gonna choose a date property here. I'm gonna call this the target deadline and add that like that. And we'll leave that for now and move on to our final database. Again, putting a heading here, and this is our tasks going to create an inline database, name it task database and hide the database title. For this one, I want a person property for the overall assignee. I want a date property for the due date. I want a status property. And I may even like to add a priority property, which I can do with the single select option, calling it priority. And then I can also add the options for P1 to 3. 
Okay, so that's the first step done. I've created my databases and given them their basic properties. The next thing I need to do is actually connect these databases together with the relation property so that I can start to group the projects within the objectives and group the tasks within the projects. So the first connection I wanna make is between the objectives and the projects database. So I can create the relation property in either database, but I'll do it at the project database level. Again, I'm just gonna add a new property by hitting this plus here and I'm gonna look for our relation property. So there's our relation property. And then I just want to, from the existing databases, find the objectives database. So for this particular one, it's this one here. And I actually want to make sure that this is a two-way relation. And I want the relation on the objective side to be called projects and I can hit add relation. The reason I wanted it to be a two-way relation is now on the objectives database, I can add a progress bar property. To do that, what I'll do is add a new property and I'm gonna look for our rollup property. And what the rollup property does is it allows us to take any of our existing relations and the only one we have at the moment is the projects relation. And then from there, I can pull in any of the different properties and calculate something from it. So out of all of the different properties from within our projects database, I can pull in, for example, the status property. And now in this calculate option, instead of just showing the original status, what I can actually do is get a percent, percent per group and choose complete. And then I can give this a bar option. So just to show you how this works now. So if I was to add a example project, and then I also was to have an example objective. And from the project database, if I was to relate that example objective, what you'll now see on the objectives database is we have that project showing because it's a two way relation, but also I've got a roll up that is showing 0%. And that is because out of all of the projects that are related to this objective, 0% of them have been marked as complete. But if I was to mark this one as done, now you'll see it shows the roll up of being 100%. If I was to add a second example project and I was again to relate it to this example objective, you'll now see that this roll up property updates to 50% complete because out of the two projects that have been related to this objective, only one of them has been set to done. So that's how I can now create this progress property and I'll update this to be called progress and give it a bit of an icon here to show that. So that's the relation between the projects and the objectives database. Now we also need to create a relation between the tasks and the projects database. Again, I'll do this at the task level. So I add a property here, call it relation. Out of the relations, I want to make sure I choose from the existing databases, the projects database. And again, I'm gonna do the same progress bar trick on the projects database. So I do wanna make sure this is a two-way relation. Call the related property name tasks and add that relation here. And now that I've done that on the project database, I can add my roll up. I'm gonna choose the roll up property, call this progress. In the relation, I'm gonna choose the task database. And the property that we wanna pull in is the status. And now for calculate, we're gonna do percent, percent per group and complete. And we'll choose the bar option here. And again, just to show you how this is working, I've just put in some example tasks from one to three here. I've related these tasks all to our first example project. And now you can see that we have these tasks shown in the relation and also in that progress bar that we've just created, it's showing 33% of the tasks have been marked as done because one third of these tasks have been marked as done. If I was to, again, mark another task as done, now it's gonna update and show this progress bar as 66%. So I've successfully connected the databases together, but how do I group the actual projects inside of the objectives page and the tasks within the projects page like we saw in our preview? Well, let's go into that now. So starting with the objectives and the projects, if I wanted to be able to open up the objectives and see my projects represented within this page in some way, that's not just by showing it here in the properties, I have a couple of options, but the easiest thing I can do is use Notion's tabs feature. So see that I'm just gonna open up this objective as a full page to make it a bit easier for me myself. And then if I come up to the top here, you'll see we have this customized layout option. When I click this, it's gonna bring out Notion's layout builder, and it's gonna allow me to start to be able to manipulate some of the properties. So for example, I might want to move this entire property group to this side panel view 
And then within the uh, actual title, I might like to start to pin some of these properties. So it was probably nice to see the owner, nice to see the progress bar and maybe the quarter and the status. And I can rearrange these in any way that I like. So now that when I apply all these changes, I can just see these properties up here in a sort of simplified view. And if I wanna see any more properties, I hit this view, view details option here. So that customized layout builder allows me to do that. But the other thing it can do is if I come up to here and go to page settings, you'll see the structure of the page can change and I can go from simple to tabs. So when I choose tabs, they give me a default tab by default, which is the content, the actual page body itself. But if I hit this add button here, I can actually create relations to existing databases. And so you can see I've already related the projects database to the objects database. So all I have to choose is the projects option. And then it's actually going to create this tab of this database that's um, related to the objective. So to show you what I mean, if I come to the filter options here, I can see that it's basically filtered the um, objectives or the projects that are showing, I should say, to projects that are related to that objective. So if I apply this to all pages, as you can see from the example project uh, example objective, you'll remember that we related both the example project and example project two. Again, you can see this in the relations here. And so only these projects are shown within this objective. If I was to go back out to this page and create another example project, example projects number three, and I don't relate it to this objective, you'll see now if I come back to the example objective, you will not see this project in here because it's not been related to it. So using this tab is how I can start to show the projects that, that belong to this objective within this objective page. The next thing I can do is basically just customize this to see the properties that I wanna see. So I'm gonna to come to the properties up here. Uh, I wanna see the progress bar, the target deadline, the status. I wanna get rid of this tasks relation because that probably isn't too helpful. And because it's already inside of this objectives page, I probably don't need to see the objectives relation. So I'll hide that as well. I'm gonna just reorganize this in a way that I like to see the information, maybe something like this. If I wanna um, shrink or, or make any of the col columns smaller, I have to actually come to the page body here and just move things around like this. But basically I'm just gonna adjust this to see the things that I want. I also have the option to sort this information in any way I like. So I can come back through this view options and come to the sort property or the sort option I, sh I should say. And I'm gonna sort this by target deadline and have this be ascending. So I wanna make sure that the um, projects that are gonna happen first, they have a target de deadline that happens first, are shown at the top of the list. So that looks good for me for now. And the last thing I can do is just give this a icon. So I'm just gonna give this the same icon as the database, which is a folder. And now I can hit apply to all pages. So now I have this, I've got my content tab, which I can just add some loose notes in, or maybe just have some overall details about the objective. And then in the projects tab, I can see the exact projects that need to be completed. Let's do the same for the projects database now. So I'm gonna open up any of these projects just so I can get to the layout builder. I'm gonna open up the layout builder. Again, just to tidy things up, I'm gonna move all these um, property or this property group to the panel. Then I'm also gonna to click to this heading just so that I can pin some of these properties. So again, I'm gonna bring in these properties here and leave these relations in the side panel. And now I'm gonna to come to page settings, make this tabbed. I'll leave the content block, add a new um, view. And this time I want the view to be of the task database because I wanna group the tasks that belong to this project within this project page. So I'm gonna choose tasks. Just by doing that, it's going to create that filter automatically that basically says that the project relation contains this, this page or, or the projects that we're looking at. And then I'm just gonna customize this. So I'm gonna come back to here, gonna look at the properties and the only one I might wanna get rid of is the actual projects relation. Again, because we're already inside the project page. So we know it's related to this project. I'm gonna rearrange some of these properties, shorten some of the columns, and then also I'd like to sort again by the date. And this time I can use the sort option here and I'm gonna do due date. And again, I'm gonna do ascending. So the first due dates come first. Now I could leave it there, but as there's gonna be a lot of tasks added to this project, I wanna make a separation between the tasks that have been done and the tasks that haven't been done. 
So for this particular view, I want this to be the tasks that are still to be done. So I'm gonna change the name of this view to to do and give it a accompanying icon using this open checkbox here. Then for the filters, we've already got our project relation, but I'm gonna add a filter now. And I'm basically just gonna say that the status is not and then done. So this is only gonna show me tasks where the status has not been set to done. And then I'm gonna create a second view and to create it nice and quickly, I can use this duplicate option here. And I'm gonna rename this to done. And again, have an accompanying icon to show this, which would be the checkbox being checked. And then instead for this filter, I'm gonna change the filter from status is not done to status is done. And now I can apply all the changes. And so now you can see for my example project, I have that task three, which is still yet to be done. And then I also have the tasks that were done, task one and two, which are, uh, are moved to this done view. And again, we can see that by the progress being 66%. So we've created the database and its properties. We've connected the databases together and we've grouped information within Notion's tabs. The final thing we can do is just build out the overall goals dashboard using the different views for the databases. So first of all, for the objectives database, if you can remember in our preview, we actually had it in a board view. So to do that, I'm just gonna come to these three dots here. And for the actual layout option, instead of it being a table, I'm gonna choose it to be a board. Now it's gonna group it by the status property, but we actually want to group it by the uh, quarter property. So we'll choose the quarter property here. And I want to, first of all, color the columns. And I also want to not hide any empty groups. So now we can see we have Q1 to Q4 showing as well as no quarter. And I'm actually gonna move no quarter up to the top here as well. And now what this does is it means that we can plan for any objectives we might want to do, but not action them yet. And then only once we're ready, for example, this example project, we know if we wanted it for Q2, we can move it into Q2 and be ready to start that. I also just wanna show you some more properties within this board view. So I'm gonna bring in the owner of the objective and the overall progress bar. And so now if I was to add myself as the owner to this objective, just like so, you can see that we see all of this information at this bird's eye view. I might also like to apply a filter to this. So I just wanna show um, objectives that have yet to be done. So status is not achieved or archived and saved for everyone. And so now this is just gonna show me the objectives that are yet to be done and that we have groups within any of the quarters or that have not yet been groups and that maybe we're thinking about doing in the future. I also just rename this view from board view to by quarter and give this a icon that makes sense. So that's one view, obviously I could add some more, but we'll leave it there, but that gives you a good idea of how you can start to customize these views. For the projects, I'd like to show the connection between the objectives and the projects. And so I'm actually gonna group these uh, projects by coming to these three dots here and doing group, and I'm going to group them by their objectives. So now you can see we have our example project and example project two being grouped within the example objective. I will also just hide this objectives view. I also hide the tasks view here, just shrink some of these columns to tidy things up. And again, I might wanna filter just to say that I only wanna see projects that are still outstanding. So project status is not done and save for everyone. And again, I can rename this view to show by objective. So we can continue doing this and building out all the different views that would make the most sense for this dashboard to make it um, a good place to come and look at our goals. Now setting objectives in your agency is a good start, but it's not gonna guarantee that things actually get done. You'll also want to give each of your team members a metric that they own so that they're accountable week to week. So check out this video here or here to see how we can build out a CEO dashboard inside of Notion that's gonna help you keep a pulse on your business and your team. And if you like the setup that we built in this video, you might also like my agency HQ template. As well as having a goals dashboard, it has a fully functioning client project system, a deals, a content system, a place to manage hiring and onboarding, as well as a whole bunch more. It's the Notion template that's been trusted by over 500 different agencies now. And we also have an entire community and course that each of our customers get access to. So look for the link in the description to this video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.